That's the more you've been strengthened Every day that you live I know that the deeper in the valley There's a higher in the mountaintop The heavier the burden The greater God's grace The more bitter The sweeter the victory at the end of the race The more that you hunger And you thirst after Jesus He promised to fill you The more with His love He promised to fill you with this wealth from above. I know that the deeper the valley, there's a higher the mountain top, the heavier the burden, the greater God's grace, the more bitter. Hallelujah. Are you glad to be here this morning? Let us pray. Father, thank you for today. Thank you for the great blessing that you've given to us. We love you. We thank you. We praise you. We ask you to fill us with your Holy Spirit and guide us. Let your will be done in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. Are you glad to be here? All those from UST, you are welcome. Where are you? Wow. Hey, powerful. Tech is the second best university in the country. The second best university. So, you are welcome from the second best university. I think you know the best university. We are always happy to welcome you to the best that there is in the land. Hallelujah. Well, I I am preaching just for a short time. And I want you to listen carefully. How to possess the land. Father, thanks for the Holy Spirit who is here today in Jesus' name. 
Amen. Amen. We are possessing the land that God is giving us. Can I have an amen? Amen. And the land is a good land. We have seen that God has plans for us. God has plans for you. And these plans will happen practically. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So how are we to possess the land? Step number one is what? Spy out the land. Step number two. Identify the giants of the land. Amen. Amen. Step number three. Be strong and have a positive attitude. All right? Do not complain. Any form of complaining is evil. All right? Any kind of complaining, whether in the, um, in the office, at, in church, even the government. It's difficult not to complain about the government. I am always tempted to complain about the government because it's so obvious that it's not easy, it's not a, a good... Can, can we have some ashes? I see people standing at the back, people outside, just help. You can sit in the middle of the aisle, it's fine. Randy in the aisle will be shorter for all the movement, all right? You can sit right there out of the view of the camera, to the right of the camera, yeah. Please help the people to come inside. There's seats in the front here as well. Because you see, I just have 30 minutes. I hear there is an exam in the hall. So we have to leave very quickly, all right? Hello, who are the people at the back? There's space in the front here. Less movement, less moving around. You easily backslide when you are an usher. Because you don't hear the word. You're always doing something. Just like Thomas and Judas. And then before you realize, you are the modern Thomas and the modern Judas. Number four. Step number four. Meditation. Is that not so? And we looked at meditation. All types of med- Seven types of meditation. All right. Now the next step is to be courageous. Courageous. And strong to obey. So I'm I'm saying this because To be obedient to God is one of the most difficult things for many people. To be courageous and strong in obedience to God. Amen. So turn with me to Joshua chapter 1. Now lift your right hand. Father, give everybody whose hand is up an iPad. In Jesus' name, I pray. I pray for iPads to be given to everybody whose hand is up. In Jesus' name. Amen. Do you believe God has given it to you? God is, God is giving you. Yes. It's yours. Now, Joshua chapter 1. After the death of Moses, all right, it came to pass that Joshua the son of Nun, Moses' minister, uh, the Lord spoke to him and said, Arise, verse 3, every place that the sole of your foot shall tread, I have given it to you. Then he demarcated the whole land from the wilderness and this Lebanon, even unto the great river, Euphrates. Amen. Amen. All right, what's the capital of Lebanon? Beirut, all right? Lebanon has a border with Israel as well. Now, there shall not be any man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. I will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. Now, there shall not be any man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life. That means that 
what he's trying to say is that not that there will not no one will ever stand in front of you but he won't be able to stand and oppose you do you understand that is why i said you should identify the enemies now this morning i had a little vision and i saw some of you when you were older yeah some of you who are nice around flowing singing i saw some of you were 30 years old you know that is some for some of you is 10 f- 5 years older than you will be and uh, how you have become yeah so i tell you um and i realize that you are going to go through difficulties you are going to meet men giants who are going to stand before you life is not as simple as it looks that is why i'm trying to show you something this morning two people tried to enter the promised land one failed and one succeeded we have to learn the mistakes of the people who couldn't enter and we have to learn those who entered what did they actually do what did what, what did God tell them when they were doing the remedials? When they did the Second World War? When they tried the second time to go in? What did they do right? Do you get it? And it was Joshua, not Moses, who was able to enter. Okay? So Joshua had some keys that Moses didn't have. So we really need to see what God emphasize to him okay and you notice he said no one no, none of the enemies joshua they didn't say anything. the first group they came and even said they even brought up the topic of enemies that there were enemies and there were giants do you get it but this one joshua was saying joshua was told nobody will stand okay lord i believe then he said be strong and of a good courage for unto this people shall thou divide for an inheritance the land which I swear unto their fathers to give them so you see again he says be strong if you are not strong you cannot be a Christian you have to be strong it's not easy to be a Christian anybody who is telling you when you come to God everything is going to be all right is telling you part of the story he hasn't told you the full story it's like people who advertise beer they smile and say a good life clap it is part of the story it's just a very small part of of the truth maybe you may have fun you may be a little tipsy you may dance you know alcohol there's there are some strange symptoms of alcoholism one of them is where you lose your memory and do things you don't remember the day after so there are people who can drink and after they they drank they get up and conduct a whole party they stand on the table they dance they can take off their clothes do everything and the next day they can't they have no memory of it it's one of the symptoms of alcoholism there are some fantastic and amazing things that alcohol does so when you start and say it's a good life I personally have met somebody who took off his clothes. I mean, at Chimota School, we have the Western Compound and the Eastern Compound. We were on the games field in the Western comp- uh, the Eastern Compound. He took off his clothes there and walked through the school because he had drunk a beer. So when you say it's a good life, it's part of the good life. The other part is not so good. So when people, you see, pastors and churches, we love to say good things and promise nice things to people. Do you understand? Even the presentation of pastors is all part of the truth, part of the story. The other part they don't like to say. And we always try to look like we are like supermen. Everything is perfect. Everything is. There's nothing like that in the world. So it's better that you hear real things in your ministry, in your life, than you hear things that are not really true. Then you get so disappointed. You see, one of the things Jesus came to cure us from was. He said, and now to heal the brokenhearted. Brokenhearted is a broken heart, which means a disappointed heart. When he said, my heart is broken. He said, the boy left me. He told me he loved me. Then I found out that we were eight. 
there were eight of us whom he loved do you understand i found out that we were eight oh he told me that he loved me and i found out that he didn't mean love in that way he meant it in another way he meant friendship and i thought of love so you say your heart is broken then you start crying you need to now get a welder or a carpenter to come and nail your heart back to sort things out to patch it up so the whole life is made up of disappointments this everything is disappointing life is disappointing marriage is disappointing having children is disappointing finishing school is disappointing you you will see when you finish school that is disappointing to finish school can't you see that i've come back to the school if it was so nice to finish school do you, don't you think i would have never come here again yeah but it's this, so when you enter life say ah why did we want to finish so much only to enter into struggles what a shock all right so be strong it, it's very difficult to obey god it's, it's not easy to be a christian anybody who is making you feel please can i have somebody stand at randy you sorting out the problems okay you know it's not easy to be a christian living for jesus isn't easy isn't easy but god has promised to sustain you don't be afraid for he is faithful god has promised living for jesus isn't easy it isn't easy so those who are telling you that it's all going to be whatever now that you are born again everything no it's rather telling you to stiffen yourself and be strong yeah now Today, if you don't remember all the messages that I've been preaching about how to possess the land, you have to remember today's. Hmm. Hmm. What do you say? Yes. Only be strong. Verse 7, verse 6. And correct, you, you are going to divide the land. And I am promising you that you are going to divide the land, which means that all the different sections of life and of the land the northern part the southern part the marriage part the children part the prosperity part the spirituality part the ministry part you will divide it will happen you will get all the sections life is made up of many sections if you have only education if you have only school okay and you can't cook especially if you are a lady you are a disappointment and you will be disappointing and no matter the man you see you may marry a man who knows how to cook and you may live on top of a restaurant but i tell you the man is having dreams of somebody cooking for him and somebody serving him so those of you who are like carpenters when you enter a kitchen you cannot do anything there is something wrong with that so when you finish school and all that you are you get it is that you have your degree in whatever we cannot eat that degree if i marry you if i marry you and i take you to my cottage and when we arrive in the house the little cottage that i have by the seaside and we enter the we enter the room and i sit down on the chair and then I look at you, my, my wife, who I have just married, and you are more like another boy that I have brought to the room. I'm going to find it difficult to be happy with you. It's like two boys have come. All of us don't know how to do anything. Oh, what a shock. What a shame. So you are going to divide the land and to enter all the different segments of the land, you need strength. Yeah. Okay, please, please believe me. So, so let, let decide, learn right now that there are different aspects of the promised land and you have to enter all the different parts. 
Because this is God's will for your life. Amen. Amen. Then verse 9, 8. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth. Thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do all that is written. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and thou shalt have good success. Amen. Amen. Have I not commanded thee, be strong, verse 9, and of a good character. Have you noticed, to enter a promised land, always strong. Strong is always appearing. Be strong. If you are not hard and strong, you don't enter the things God has for you. Yeah. Because the devil is sitting on most of your eggs. Yeah. The devil is sitting on most of your treasures. The devil is sitting on your husband, your future husband. Those of you girls who say, I don't mind, you mind. You mind. I'm telling you that you mind. Don't say you don't mind. You mind. Don't say, I don't want to marry. You want to marry. You want it. And you like us more than we like you. I'm putting it to you. You mind. So me, I don't, I'm not interested. You are interested. Stop, stop fooling around. We, know, we no longer believe such things. We used to believe it when we were younger. But now we have seen that girls like boys more than boys like girls. Far more. <laughs> Verse 9. Have I not commanded thee? Be strong. Verse 9. And of a good courage, and don't be afraid, neither be thou dismayed, for the Lord thy God is with thee, whithersoever thou goest. God is with us. If God is with you, who can be against you? Hey! Do you see how NDC wants Rawlings to be on their side? And NDP also wants Rawlings to be on their side. And even I have seen Nana Kufuado going to visit Rawlings. Hey! You see, there are certain people, if they are on your side, you are guaranteed victory. So they are saying, if Rollins be for you, who can be against you in the elections? But we are saying, if God be for you, who can be against you in this life? If God is on your side. Yeah. I saw an NDC advert and I saw President Rollins in the advert. They showed Muhammad leaning over and chatting with him. So that, yeah, they are discussing. It's true. And yesterday I saw NDP is being launched and now Koned Rajiman rolling with her husband and her husband has come to also say big things. Hey! That she is the one who has knows every village, every town. Why are people afraid of such a small woman? Why are they afraid? Why are they afraid to go into opposition? They should not be afraid because of injustices. Injustices. <laughs> Then I saw Nana Kufuado also visiting Ro- somebody who he has been calling man with atrocities. I mean, somebody who are, uh, uh, against the rule of law, who has overthrown governments and so on. And here is a lawyer who has I mean, fought against all these things, going to visit him. I was saying, Rollins has become a hero in Ghana. It's wonderful. A real hero. And amazingly, amazingly, he is one of the only people who can say the truth so wildly, speaking against his own people. It's a fantastic thing. If Christians will have some of those characteristics, it will help us. Yeah. It's amazing. Hmm. Anyway, back to the point. For the Lord thy God is with thee. Do you know that God is with me? God is with me. If God was not with me, I would not be able to do what I am doing. God is with me. And his presence is with me. Jesus, I, Jesus, I, I start talking. I, I know that he's in the room. Oh, yeah. And I've seen, I mean, a number of people have seen him with me. Yeah. People have seen him with me. And I haven't seen him. But I've seen angels with me. But a number of people have seen him with me. One day I finished preaching in, in, in uh, 
South, South Africa. And an elderly lady, she must have been 75 plus. She came to me. She said to me, come here. After preaching, come here. And I came because when an elderly lady calls you, you say, come, you better go. And she said, sit down. And I sat down by the table. Yeah. I finished with a big tent. And then some, everybody in the, that church was Indian. It was in, in, an Indian church. Only Indians. And she asked me, do you know that when you were preaching, Jesus was walking behind you on the stage? And I said, no, I didn't know. She said to me, I see visions like if this is a chair, this is a table, physically. I'll see you standing and see the table physically. This is how I see Jesus. And I was almost 70 something to 80 years old. She said, yeah. Anyway, she said, yeah, I wanted you to know that when you were preaching, Jesus was walking behind. And then she, she added, she said, and I want you to know that it's a very rare thing. Yeah, that's what she added. I want you to know that it's a very rare thing. Anyway, thank you. Bye-bye. She got up and she... Went, yeah. I think she's a minister of the gospel. I don't know. But she, a, a lot, number of people have cited Jesus with me. Yeah. If he was not with me, finish. Yeah. So, if God is with you, you will make it. And I pray God will be with you. Amen. Then it goes on. Now, make sure, okay, you are strong to obey the commandments. Now, notice verse Eight, this book of the law shall not depart, but you meditate therein day and night, that thou mightest observe to do all that is therein. Otherwise, so that you make your way prosperous. Now, one of the main reasons why, because I'm talking about being courageous to obey. I've seen different people at different places with different ranges of obedience. And I've come to learn that obedience is what actually makes you a Christian and keeps taking you higher. For instance, I have many pastors who God called to be in full-time ministry, but they couldn't obey him. So they remained as lay pastors. I have a lot of pastors like that. They, They couldn't trust that God could look after them. Yes. So they are being replaced by younger people. Their shoes and their ministries because the bible says let his bishop break another take it let somebody else take his place Ida is not the first person who sang for me and she will not be the last others are singing but if you if you have a position and you don't sit in it well somebody can in fact when she came to church i told, I told her somebody sitting in your chair because Cadella is sitting in her, her chair so I said, somebody sitting in your chair. Because she's been away for some weeks. <laughs> you have to always, your chair, you must always watch your chair carefully. <laughs> yeah. God never gives you something that is free. Freehold. Somebody is always where you are supposed to be. That's why he said, go and fight the people in the promised land. They are already, they are living there. It's their houses. So you fight for every inch. Every position you have, there is somebody maybe supposed to be there. If you don't like it, God will raise up somebody else to to occupy it. Amen. Are you listening? So, you need to meditate deeply in the word of God so that you can be strong to obey it. Many are not strong enough to obey I've met people who are supposed to forgive. They can't forgive. Oh. Yeah, recently I was talking to one of my pastors. He said, I, I cannot, I cannot, for, I cannot do, you know, I'm mature, somebody who has been a pastor for more than 10 years. And he said, he cannot forgive. You see, how you know you're forgiving is if you can flow with the person as if nothing has happened. That's forgiveness. When, when you can't flow as if nothing has happened, <laughs> never say you're forgiven. When your flow is like, as if you just met. You see, you and your 
beloved. How you are. When I met my beloved here in the school here, this is where I met her. I prayed on all these junctions here, here in the gardens. This pray, I've worked with her. Even that, yes, for years. So your flow with somebody, as though nothing has happened since you knew the person, that's when you say you're forgiven. And I spoke to her pastor, he said, I cannot. He said, I can't, I can't, I have to leave the church. After years. So make sure if you're going to enter the promised land, and as soon as he said those words, I knew he was turning away from the land. He was turning away from the land. Yeah. Some of you, if you are able to stay in the house of the, of the Lord and obey him continuously, each step you take takes you further into following and entering the promised land. And when it gets to a place, you, it will not be things in the Bible that you'll be obeying. It will be the voice of the Spirit. Like where I am now, many of the things that I do, I have to obey him. He has to tell me, do this, do this, do this by May, do this by June. Do this instead of this, do this instead of this. They are all not in the Bible. But I have to follow. And I see the understanding of it as I go along. Yeah, but it's very important to obey. And you need strength to obey. Strength and courage. Eish. Otherwise you cannot. And many times, things that God will tell you to do, you have decided not to do them already. And then, he tells you to do it. Yes. Things that are against your nature. Things that are against how you are. And he tells you, do it. Do this. Yeah, but you wouldn't know. So, it takes a lot of strength to be obedient to God. So, I just want to say to you today, if you don't hear anything, remember that, The key to entering the land is obeying him and being strong enough to obey him. Strong enough. It takes takes strength not to have sex with somebody. Oh yeah. It's it's more natural to have sex. More natural to fall asleep. These are natural. You see, the Bible says that, remember there were ten virgins. Five were wise, five were foolish. The Bible says, when the bridegroom tarried, all of them slept. All of them slumbered. Not the five with oil. All. You see, when, when things delay a bit, everybody will respond in the same way. It's not that some will not sleep. And some will sleep. Everybody is coming under the same circumstances and will respond. But if you are wise, you will have some extra oil. To take you. So every, all of you are going to have relationship, sex, this, all these things. It's normal. It's more normal to it's more normal to start having sex from the time that you are a teenager. Yeah. That's that's when you even have the strongest erections and the strongest desire. Hey. And thank God for the strength that you have there because it will get weaker and your peak is 25. So make sure that you are married by your peak. So that you can maximize the usage of all your peak, peak strength. Peak season. That's your cocoa season. That's when you can do acrobatics and do this type of dancing. And aerobics. What a shock. Now look at verse 8. It says meditate. Think deeply. Deeply about the word of God. So that you'll be strong to obey it. Most of us are not thinking deeply about the word. So the strength for obedience doesn't come. When you think about forgiveness. And that without forgiveness God cannot answer your prayers. Because God said I'll forgive you murder. Kill somebody. Do this. Do everything. I'll forgive. But if you do not forgive. Neither will your father forgive them. Forgiveness is a wild thing. So for a pastor who has been a pastor for 10 years, 15 years, 20 years, to tell me that I can't handle it. I just have to leave. If I I can't flow. Then it shows that he has not thought deeply about what he's saying. Yeah, you haven't thought deeply. That you, God will answer every prayer. But if you do not forgive, God will not forgive. This is where God ends with you. At forgiveness. So since I married, it has been one of my major 
verses that guides me. Because marriage, you can always quarrel with your wife, especially on Saturdays if you are a pastor. Pastors have quarrels usually on Saturdays. It's called PPQ. Pre-preaching quarrels. But you need to forgive. So that God can hear your prayer because you are going to preach. So many times you see what happens. So forgiveness, love, holiness, uh, if you are not strong. When the feeling comes on you, is there anybody who has had a feeling before? Yesterday, yesterday, yesterday. It is not a small thing. (laughs) Today, before we end, I want to help you to think deeply about the word of God. Okay? So that you will obey it all your life. Should I help you? Are you sure you want me to help you to think about this? That Hey, this thing, I must do it. Think deeply about the word of God. If you don't obey, what's going to happen? Hey. Turn with me to Deuteronomy. This is the last scripture. Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy chapter 28. All right, somebody is in an opera. <laughs> Verse 1. It shall come to pass that if thou shalt hearken diligently to the voice of the Lord to observe and to do all his commandments, which I command thee this day, that the Lord will set thee on high above all the nations of the earth. Wow. And all these blessings shall come upon thee. Blessed shall thou. These are the blessings we read when people are getting married. Often you hear I say, Blessed shall thou be in the city. Blessed shall thou be in the field. Blessed shall be the fruit of thy body. And we keep blessing the people. Isn't it amazing? Now, at the end of the blessings, we go to verse 14. Thou shalt not go aside from any of the words, any of the words which I command thee to the right hand or to the left hand. Many of us are on the right hand of the word or the left hand of the word. It's near the word but not the word. But it says you shall not go to the right hand of the word or the left hand of the word. Don't. To go after other gods to serve them. But it shall come to pass. Hmm, verse 15. If thou will not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. To observe to do all his commandments and his statutes. Which I command thee this day. That all these curses. Frustrations. Shall come upon thee. Then he starts to list. So many things. Verse 16. You see, if you meditate on this, you'll be afraid of disobedience. Because this is where he said, don't disobey. If you disobey, these things will happen. Curses shall thou be in the city, and curses shall thou be in the field. That means you'll be frustrated when you are in your village. And when you come to Accra, you'll be frustrated. Or you'll be frustrated in Accra. When you go to London, you'll also be frustrated. And there are a lot of people who are frustrated in London. Even more frustrated than when they were in Ghana. This scripture has happened exactly. Exactly 100%. They are as frustrated in America as they were in Mankasim. When they were leaving. I'm telling you. You have only to travel abroad to see. That there are a lot of people. They are frustrated everywhere they are. Impoverished. I, you see, what it is is that I have the privilege of taking offerings in different places. So, so that I can see what people can give and how difficult it is. Even within Accra, 
when I go from church to church and I have miracle services or fundraising service for healing Jesus crusade, I see the different levels of frustration in different parts of Accra. Yeah. You'll be amazed. You can do a fundraising service with a lot of people in certain, I don't want to mention the areas. Yeah. And then I can do that same service with fewer people in another area. The result is completely different. So within Accra, there are levels of frustration. So how many of you, how many of you were planning to travel abroad? If you are not planning to travel abroad, then you are not a Guinean. I beg you to tell the truth and cross your heart and shame the devil. How many of you are, have some plans somewhere to travel? Raise your, raise your right hand. Raise your right hand, please, so that you shame the devil. Look at that. Everybody here. Hmm. But I tell you, if you are not obeying God, eh? You will be frustrated here and there. Yeah? Bishop Richard, come. You are visiting us. He has been in... How many years have you been living in in the UK? 19 years now. (laughs) 19 years. Do you know... Are are there some people who are frustrated over there? Oh, there are people who are totally lost and frustrated. (laughs) Why would you say they are lost and frustrated? Oh, because... They can't make it financially. I mean, it's really difficult. It's really tough for them financially living the quality of life. It's very difficult. They have money? No, I mean, just, just making it. Barely making it. Yeah. It's I, called, I, their address is called Barely Get Along Street. <laughs> yeah. Barely Get Along Street. Yeah. A lot of people live on credit, so a lot of them are on debt, so. I mean, even though it seems as though they have some things, it's not, it's not for them. Anybody who is in the city that you are dreaming to go, who doesn't come to Ghana once a year or twice a year, may be very likely on Belly Get Along Street. Number 404, Belly Get Along Street. True or not true? Bishop, is very true. Yeah. True or not true? So it's better you obey God so that you will not be frustrated over there. Oh, I've lived in the UK before. I hated London. If there was a place that I hated in the whole world, I didn't hate anywhere. It was only London that I hated. Because I've been poor there before. Hey. I had one pair of shoes. One pair of shoes started long ago. And my shoes got spot from here to the end was separated from the shoe. So the, the, the only part that was joined was the back. So it was like an alligator mouth. And I, I no, I'm telling you, literally, I had no money either to repair or to buy. You, you can't even believe it that you cannot repair, you cannot buy. So every day I wear these shoes and it's like that. And my biggest problem was my biggest problem was that I was playing the piano in the church. And I was playing the drum and the, 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 the church has steps to the stage. You see how the stage is, you have to go up the steps. So my greatest challenge was on Sunday morning when I when I entered the church I put the shoe down I put the shoe down like this and then I slide on the motorway this way Nobody could see But when I reach the stage and I turn around like this and then I like, Glory to God hey! It's a style and it's a style that I learned out of need and difficulty. What a shock. Then, one day the pastor announced that the way the people on the stage dress is not good. So everybody is supposed to wear a suit, a jacket. And I did not have one. My shoes were alligator style and I did not have. So, how to get this jacket? I tell you, I went through, I got some small money, I went to the town in the end, I bought something like a cardigan. (laughs) 
Yeah. And I, I always paid my tithes. Even in those times. I always paid my tithes. Still, I paid my tithes. That was actually one of the reasons why I, I didn't have any extra money. Because I was paying tithes always. I believe in that. I believe in that. 